Hello students, welcome to another video session from Kanish Biology. So we have started the lesson cell, its structure and functions. I already that was, that have was taken a That was part one. Now it is part two in which we are going to learn about uh, how to absorb plasma membrane under microscope. So there is a simple activity which we can do in the laboratory. I will explain the aim, requirement and procedure. So let's enter into the topic. In this session, I am going to explain you about plasma membrane. Children, let me ask you a question that in the previous session I told you that plasma membrane is the common membrane that is present in both plant and animal cells. So in case of animal cells, the outermost boundary of animal cell is the cell membrane which is also called plasma membrane. Okay, then why it is said to be outermost membrane in animal cells? Because in animal cells, you cannot find anything else. Only there will be cytoplasm and uh, around the cytoplasm, a thin membrane which is called cell membrane. Right? And above cell membrane, can you see anything else in case of animal cell? No, you cannot find anything. Right? So this is how a cheek cell uh, appears under microscope. And within the cytoplasm, of course, all the other cell organelles will be present and then in plant cells in addition to cell membrane i told you that there is another layer present another tough rigid layer present which is called the cell wall can you remember children i have shown you this picture in my previous session these are the onion peel cells under microscope so this is a single cell enlarged and what did you observe in this cell you can observe a cell wall which is tough and can be clearly visible but Below the cell wall, there is another thin membrane present which is called plasma membrane or cell membrane. But can you clearly see the cell membrane? Though you can see the cell wall, the cell membrane cannot be clearly seen. The reason is cell membrane is very thin compared to the cell wall and it is transparent. That's the reason why it cannot be seen. And there is another important reason why you cannot absorb the cell membrane under microscope under normal light microscope that reason is the cell membrane is attached to the cell wall understood children the cell membrane is tightly attached to the cell wall because inside the cell there is cytoplasm as the water is present in this the water may be exerting some pressure towards outside right the cytoplasm and the water present in that may be exerting some pressure towards outside as a result the cell membrane though it is present it will stick to the cell wall as a result it is not clearly visible then how can you absorb the cell membrane you can absorb the cell membrane under electron microscope but if you want to absorb the cell membrane under normal compound light microscope is it possible yes it is possible children if you think logically see i told you that the cell membrane is tightly attached to the cell wall because the water or the cytoplasm present in the cell is exerting outward pressure and if you want to absorb the cell membrane under light microscope you need to separate the cell membrane from the cell wall are you getting my point brain if it is the cell membrane you need to separate the cell membrane from the cell wall if you are able to separate the cell membrane from the cell wall then it may be possible for you to absorb the cell membrane not clearly you cannot absorb the cell membrane clearly but somehow you can manage to find the outermost boundary in the form of a cell membrane okay then how can we do that how is it possible how can we separate the cell membrane from the cell wall there is a technique very simple technique is there there is a technique called plasmolysis so plasmolysis is a physiological process in which the water from the cytoplasm comes out of the cell understood children don't forget i told you that the rigidity of the cell results in the cell membrane being attached to the cell wall if you make the cell flaccid that means if you remove some of the water from the cytoplasm then the cytoplasm become flaccid right when the cytoplasm become flaccid the size of the cytoplasm becomes less as a result the cell membrane gets separated from the cell wall and you can absorb the cell membrane normally under light microscope okay then the problem is how can we remove water how plasmolysis happens how can we artificially do plasmolysis of a cell and in this session i am going to explain about how can we do that understood children children there is a simple principle behind this if you keep a cell which is touched in concentrated salt solution then outside there will be more concentrated salt solution 
compared to the cytoplasm as a result because of the difference in the concentration the water from the cytoplasm comes out understood as a result the cell become flaccid and the cell membrane gets separated from the cell wall then we can observe it under microscope in this session i am going to explain about this experiment how to observe the cell membrane under microscope okay so first of all let us see how the cells appear under microscope so you know friends there is a logic here if you want to observe the cell membrane the cytoplasm should be colored getting my point there is a simple logic if the cell is transparent it may not be clearly seen under microscope if the cytoplasm of a cell has a natural dye in that or natural pigment in that then it may be easy for us to observe the cytoplasm along with the cell membrane so that's the reason why in this experiment we selected a plant by name rio discolor what's the name of the plant the name of the plant is rio discolor and if you take the leaf of rio discolor and observe under microscope observe the lower epidermis of rio discolor under microscope this is how it appears and you can see it is the cytoplasm is in purple color and we did not add any stain to the cells even though we did not add any stain any stain to that you can see the cells are appearing in purple color the reason is the cytoplasm of the rio discolor cells not all the cells the lower epidermis of rio discolor leaf what is that the lower epidermis of rio discolor leaf they contain what they contain a natural pigment called anthocyanin it's because of that natural anthocyanin pigment the cytoplasm is colored so this is how we can use this property of rio discolor to observe the cytoplasm and cell membrane so this is how it appears but what's the problem here the cell membrane is attached to the cell wall right when the cell membrane is attached to the cell wall you cannot see that so we have to separate the membrane from the cell wall and how can we do that we can do that by a method called plasmolysis you see here previously the cells cytoplasm was more because of more water and because of that the cell membrane is attached to the cell wall here but when the water from the cytoplasm is lost the cytoplasm is shrinking and as a result the cell membrane is getting separated from the cell wall this is how we can observe the cell membrane but how can we do that so let us find out what is that experiment and what's the activity aim requirement and procedure of that experiment to observe the cell membrane under microscope so activity about observing the cell membrane what is the aim i told you that the aim is to observe the cell membrane under the microscope and what are the requirements just now i told you that we need a rio discolor leaf so this is the rio discolor plant have you seen this plant anywhere children this is an ornamental plant usually grown in the gardens in your homes and uh, you can clearly see that the upper surface of the leaf is in green color but the lower surface is purple in color why is it so i already told you the reason the lower epidermal cells they have a pigment in their cytoplasm which is called anthocyanin so what is the pigment present in the lower epidermal cells of rio discolor plant the pigment is anthocyanin okay so it's because of the anthocyanin the lower epidermal cells are in purple color and what else is required we require some amount of water and uh, we require uh, slides these are the slides and we requ also require uh, some amount of salt and a few cover slips are required and of course a spatula because because we have to prepare a salt solution so we also need uh, the help of spatula and uh, finally we need a microscope because after doing this experiment we finally have to put the specimen on the slide and observe it under the microscope and i told you that we have to prepare some amount of salt solution it's a very simple process just to take 100 ml of water and uh, in that we add 5 grams of uh, salt stir it well then that becomes 5 percent salt solution or sodium chloride solution understood children so what is the procedure the first step in the procedure is we need to take a clear glass slide you knew what is glass slide we can go to lab and we need to clean the glass slide and it must be clear without any spot or damage on that okay so the second step is you need to take a rio leaf rio means rio discolor leaf and uh, we need to now separate the lower epidermis single layer of lower epidermis from the rio leaf for that what we have to do you see what this man is doing here simply you can take a rio you can just break it at the middle and you can pull the lower part like this 
okay if you pull it like that then you will get a thin layer can you see the thin layer yes you can get a thin layer so after this you need to take a small piece of peel with a light colored portion with a forcep take a forcep and with the help of the forcep we have to take a small piece from this peel slowly you have to separate which is light in color and carefully put it on a slide okay children but careful when you are putting it on the slide there should not be any foldings it should be flat right then what is the other step next add a drop of salt solution on the peel okay so this is the piece of peel we have collected and on that piece of peel now we are adding a drop of salt solution okay i told you already why we are adding salt solution when you add a drop of salt solution the water present in the cytoplasm comes out of the cell by a process called exosmosis don't worry these are some of the technical words about these words clearly we will be discussing in our fourth lesson plasma membrane okay so the water comes out as the water comes out of it the turgidity of the cell decreases the pressure within the cytoplasm decreases and the cytoplasm shrinks as the cytoplasm shrinks the plasma membrane gets separated from the cell wall okay now what you should do you have to cover the peel with a clean cover slip this is how you can place a cover slip and slowly cover this specimen with the help of a cover slip and make sure that there should not be any foldings and then put it under microscope and you can observe it under microscope so this is how we can perform the procedure and now what you should do you have to make observation okay observation is very important now we can observe the cytoplasma of the cells okay and what did you observe in this you can clearly observe that the cytoplasma of the cells shrink and colored area has a boundary so now this is how the cells of rio discolor appears under microscope after plasmolysis so what happened here previously you have seen in the previous picture right in the previous picture we have seen that the cell membrane is completely attached to the cell wall but now here what happened the water has been lost from the cytoplasm as a result the cytoplasm has shrunken and uh, the plasma membrane or cell membrane it got separated from the cell wall okay so this is now outermost boundary of the cytoplasm the boundary of the colored area is cell membrane okay already i told you that you can just locate the cell membrane but you cannot clearly study the structure of cell membrane without taking the help of electron microscope understood children so this is how we can observe the cell membrane under microscope by using this technique understood so i hope that you understood children in my next session i will be talking about the properties of plasma membrane okay and what is it made up of everything we will be discussing in our next session that's all for today children i will meet you in the next session